Now we would like to start the Foreign Minister's press conference. And today, the Japanese government decided to provide emergency grant aid of one million U.S. dollars to Kyrgyz. This September, near the border of Kyrgyz and Tajikistan, a military clash took place that caused uh, internal displacement of people in Kyrgyz. In response to it, the government decided to provide humanitarian assistance, including foods and daily necessities uh, through WFP and UNHCR. We sincerely hope this assistance will help Kyrgyz people with whom Japan has long-standing friendship to overcome the current difficulty. That's all from me. Please raise your hand if you have a question. Please come close to the microphone. After being designated, please state your name and affiliation first. Okada-san from Sankei, please. This is Sankei from Okada. I would like to talk about the Japanese U.S. forces stationed in Japan. In Kadena, the F-15 uh, is being permanently stationed by the U.S. forces. And there has been report that the F-15 uh, will be a deployed mobilely or on a rotation basis starting from next year due to the concerns over the Taiwan Strait and the Senkaku Island. Experts have voiced concern that this could reduce the deterrence uh, toward China. What is your view and uh, the, with regards to the impact of this change? I have, I'm aware of the news reports. In order to properly respond to the severe, growing in severe security environment, it is very important for the U.S. forces in Japan to secure the necessary capacity. And there have been various discussions uh, with the U.S. side. On the other hand, because of the relationship with the United States, we would like to refrain from talking about any specifics uh, with regards to what is being discussed. In any case, in order to secure our peace and stability, we will close continue to work closely with the United States in any case. This is Tanaka speaking. The Joint staff, uh, Chief of Staff uh, of uh, North Korea, and according to the information, North Korea uh, has launched a missile. And can you identify and confirm the fact I have learned the press report. However, when it comes to the details, um, please inquire with the, Depart uh, with the Ministry of Defense. Iwasa-san from NHK, please. I'm Iwasa from NHK. I would like to talk about the risk of the nuclear arsenal usage by Russia. Yesterday, uh, President Putin said that he has never voiced any proactive uh, use of uh, nuclear weapons. Although Putin has, uh, R Russia has commented many times on the use of nuclear weapons, uh, what is your view, uh, Minister? And also, in what kind of the message should Japan deliver to the international community at large? In the Valudai conference, I am aware that uh, President Putin has made such a comment. As Russia's invasion of Ukraine continues, Russia has communicated various messages with regards to nuclear weapons. And Japan has serious concerns over the use of nuclear weapons by Russia. And such threats and, of course, uh, usage of nuclear weapons cannot be condoned. Also, Japan will not accept the fake assertion by Russia that Ukraine is considering the use of dirty bombs. Uh, President Zelensky has consistently denied such allegations, and any excuse to escalate cannot be accepted. Japan, as the only country to experience the atomic bomb, uh, we should appeal uh, the importance of lack of uh, not using nuclear weapons in uh, the United Nations, in the G7, as well as in bilateral forums uh, with the Australia and Lithuania. Higuchi-san of uh, Chigoku newspaper. 
Now, with regard to the uh, nuclear posture review, which was released yesterday, the sole purpose or no first use when it comes to those, uh, they were not uh, incorporated. And uh, some atom bomb citizens uh, have some grudges about them or complaints about this posture. Now, with regard to the most recent NPR, uh, it is um, for ensuring that the validity and effectiveness of the U.S. deterrence and the deterrence and to be provided unto the allied countries. And it is a clear commitment to the reliable extended deterrence. So the Japanese government strongly supports NPR. And with the, uh, in terms of NPR, that it also refers to the importance of uh, the uh, reduction of the nuclear roams. And there is supposed to be a comprehensive and a balanced uh, approach focusing on reduction of nuclear risks. So it is supposed to be a realistic and practical approach in toward the realization of nuclear-free world. And that is our posture. And then we, with that uh, posture, we highly appreciate the NPR, um, the release. And today, the foreign minister's uh, statement uh, is released. And with regard to the policy uh, of the sole purpose, I think there are different kinds of definitions uh, given to them. However, in the current uh, NPR, the, the based on the thorough review, the U.S. concluded that no first use and the sole purpose may bring serious risks to the U.S. and its allies in light of a broader scope of non-nuclear weaponry developed and de deployed and by the rival countries. That is the reason why they did not include in such uh, elements. On a related note, with regards to not using for a preemptive strike and the sole purpose, there are views that Japan opposed inclusion uh, of such in the NPR. Can you respond to that? Uh, Japan and United States have continuously discussed the nuclear deterrence uh, as well as the security and defense cooperation and uh, disarmament and non-proliferation policies. We have been discussing closely on a wide range of topics. And however, the details will all impact directly our national security. And of course, there is a relationship with the United States. So I will refrain from answering your question. Asahi Shimbun, Nobira-san. This is Nobira of Asahi Shimbun. Uh, now, comprehensive economic package will be approved today. And then the foreign minister, you are talking about the importance uh, of overwintering assistance and to Ukraine. And what kind of specific measures are you thinking of? Well, up until now, we already provided uh, the humanitarian and fiscal and support with the amount of uh, $1.1 billion uh, to Ukraine and the neighboring countries. And in the package, the overwintering assistance is also included. And on a, based on the comprehensive economic package, we are going to see uh, what kind of needs on the ground. And we will continue to provide humanitarian assistance, uh, including overwintering and support unto the reconstruction of their life. Uh, in the capacity of the next year's G7 uh, presidency, we are going to continue to support Ukrainians uh, fighting uh, for their freedom. And we're leveraging on the knowledge and experiences that uh, we are going to partner with the international community to continue to play an important role in the assistance and to Ukraine. This is going to be, this is going to be the, next, uh, the last question. If there are no further questions, we would like to close the press conference. Thank you very much for participating today.